message, Thanksgiving and praise will help position you for revival. Thanksgiving and praise will position you for revival. Right? And so I looked up the word Thanksgiving, dictionary.com, and it's the act of giving thanks. So there's a, there's a movement behind that. It's grateful acknowledgement of benefits or favors, especially to God. It's an expression of thanks, especially to God, a public celebration. Come on now. A public celebration and acknowledgement of divine favor or kindness. In other words, God is a good God all the time. And so going there, we have, there's, a, there's a place where we position ourselves, right? And, you know, um, we come here to position ourselves. What for? To learn, right? To, to encourage one another, to build each other up, and, and to help each other out. Because, you know, if you, if you have a need in this church, the people here are quick, quick to, to, to supply your, you know, help you with your need. They're quick to pray for you. They're quick to believe God with you. If, you, if you're sick in body, they're quick to lay hands on you. Amen. So a, pl- a position is a place where someone or something is located or has been put. You have been located and placed here. The location where someone or something should be, the correct place. See, there's a lot of places for you that you could be, but where you're placed is where your blessing will be. Where you're placed is where harvest will come from if you stay faithful to where you're placed. It's the correct place. And I like this one. It's a place where a part of a military force is posted for strategic purposes. Come on now. God has deployed us in Bedford. He moved us from from Dartmouth, and he deployed us here. And he opened up doors. And there was doors that were trying to close us, them. But you, you you can't stop what God has planned. And what God has started. And God put us here. So God will be the one that moves us here. The, no, nobody with a loud mouth or, or all the complaining you can do is going to move us out of here because God placed us here. He knew it was going to go on. He, he wasn't taken by surprise. Not at all. As a matter of fact, we were to be a blessing to them. And they turned it down. They turned it down. We didn't change our stance. You know, we're still here. We're still praising the Lord. We're still praying. We're still believing God. We're still coming on Thursdays and and Sundays. Praise the Lord. So God has deployed us here. And revival, I like this. Revival is restoration to life. Let it rain. Right? And it won't relent. There's, there's something about that, because when you start saying that to God, he's saying it right back to you. He's not going to relent until he has you all. And we're not going to re- relent until we have him all, and all of his goodness, all of his mercy, all that he is for us. So it's a restoration to life, consciousness, strength, etc. It's a, I like this, awakening in a church or a community of interest in and care for matters relating to personal religion. What is, and like, a, a, you know, a, we kind of stay away from the word religion, but personal. And it's with our personal experience with the Lord, right? Because if, you know, your, your personal experience with him, if it's unrelenting, it's going to rub off on everybody else. And everybody else comes in and, one, you know, one will tell one friend, another one will tell two friends, and so on and so on and so on. And all of a sudden, this little light of mine is going to shine, and your little light is going to shine, and all of a sudden, we got a blast and furnace going on in here. That's what happens. And that's your, that's your personal religion. Um, in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, they talk about revival. It's a return or recall or recovery to life from death. That's good. Because we once were dead, but now we're alive. That's the revival of a drowned person. And I mean, you know, you think about it. Uh, before we got saved, we were drowning in drugs, drowning in alcohol, drowning in debt, drowning in being messed up, and all that other stuff. But now we're not. Amen. We're okay. Right? 
And sometimes we just got to take it easy on ourselves and go easy and stop being so hard on yourself and realize, look how far, if you could take a, st- if you could stop, take stock, look back at how far you've come, you're going to surprise yourself. And, uh, you know, Brother Paul was talking about that. That was good on Thursday. He was talking about a lot of things that he used to do. He doesn't do anymore. He doesn't want to. And that's the thing. God changes your want to. It's not you being changed. You know, some, some, some people want to, you know, they want to clean their fish, fish before they catch them. Well, no. No. No, you can't do that. You let God do that. You're not the Holy Ghost. So you don't go up in people's face and tell them, you ought to... I, I had some relatives like that used to come up and just want to put their finger in your face and you gotta, you better, you need to. I was like, oh shoot, no, no, I don't. I need to get away from you. That's what I need to do. I better get away from you. <laughs> Leave me alone. So that's a return or recall to activity from a state of languor or laziness as a revival of spirits. Another, another one says it's a return or recovery from a state of neglect, oblivion, obscurity, or depression. And, you know, a lot of people, when you first start, started coming to church, I know I was, I wasn't the happiest person because I was in a mess. And I need to get my mess cleaned up. And, and God did that. And you heard Shirley talk about it. And look, she's got her side, but I got my side too. And one day I'll talk to you about it, but <laughs> it ain't going to be today. <laughs> so, you know, really re- revival is to rev up, to increase in strength and to accelerate sharply. Come on now. You think about it. That you know, last two Thursdays ago they had that great big um call it an awakening. And like the big praise and worship happening. And and it was huge. And 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 you know, you think about it, most of the Christians in the city um showed up for that. And it was a big reunion. But it was like, okay, why do we have to wait for somebody from out of uh, from out of town to come in? To, for us to do something this big, where all of the churches that were here were the ones that were affected by it. They were the ones that, that, that did it, right? So I'm sure we can put something like that together, if we, but we got to get along with the churches. There it is. There is a key. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody can drive the, the train, right? And just, you know, we just concentrate on Jesus making him famous. Come on now. That's my thing. So let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 34, verse 1, Passion Translation. The Passion. So we're talking about thanksgiving and praise, and it's going to help you position for revival. You get yourself revved up to accelerate sharply. I like that. To stir up. Stir yourself up. Because, you know, so many times you, you, you come in and you're just, you're worn out. Like Stephen was talking about, he had a day. He had a month and a day in one day. <laughs> it was like a month. <laughs> but what did he do? He came in, he put on some praise and worship. Why? Because he stirred himself up. And he comes in here, laid it down, stirred himself up. So Psalm 34, verse 1, Passion. It says, Lord. I'm bursting with joy over, uh, over what you've done for me. My lips are full of perpetual praise. And something that's perpetual just keeps going and going and going and going. I'm bo- and here it is. I'm boasting of you and all your works, so let all who are discouraged take heart. Join me, everyone. Let's praise the Lord together. Let's make him famous. Let's make his name glorious to all. Listen to my testimony. This is my testimony, and this is probably all of yours, too. I cried to God in my distress, and he answered me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God he answered. Every time. How many times have we, have we talked to God and said, God, if you get me through this, dot, 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 I'm going to serve you. <laughs> and he does, and you don't. <laughs> well, come on, now, you can be honest. Come on, we all did that. God, get me out of this deal, man. I, I, I'm yours. Uh, then all of a sudden, it was like there was another party. But it says, listen to my testimony. I cried to God in my distress, and he answered me, and he freed me from all my fears. And really, you know, you think about it, the base of this whole thing is fear, right? 
<laughs> you know, so many people are, are hooked on FOMO, <laughs> fear of missing out. Missing out on what? Really? Churches should be dealing with FOMO. Missing out. Hey, Holy Ghost showed up. Oh, yeah. Thursday night. What? Wow. We did something we haven't done in, well, a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I believe we're going to do it again and more. We need to because that, that was, you know, <laughs> you don't need a, a great big sign to say that was it. <laughs> <laughs> it was it. Psalms chapter one, please. Verse one in King James Version. Blessed. I like that. That word blessed is empowered to prosper. Blessed is that person. That number one. I I, I was reading it, you know, because sometimes we, we've read these and read them and just glanced over it. But if you slow down and take your time, it says blessed is that person that number one, not not. Number one, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Number two, nor stands in the way of sinners. Number three, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. There's three things here that they're talking about. But it says, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his word or in his law does he meditate day and night. And he should be like a tree planted by the, by the rivers of water, that number one. See, this is going to, if, if you walk not... Number one, you're going to bring forth his fruit in season. See, if you, not, if you walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, you are number one, you're going to bring forth it, your fruit in his season. Number two, his leaf shall not, uh, also shall not wither. Why? Because you're not standing in the seat of the, uh, or standing in the way of sinners. And number three, whatsoever you do shall prosper. Why? Because um, you don't sit in the seat of the scornful. See, those things, they, they, they cancel each other out. If you do the one, you're going to get the other. If you don't do the one, you, you're not going to get the other. Right? right? But it's, it's when it, because I was looking at that going, okay, there's one, two, three things here. And the, these other three things cancel those first three things. If you do it. Right? You're going to be blessed. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, King James Version, it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they're all with one accord in one place. Sounds like us. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing, a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it, in other versions, it says, he sat on each one of them. Now, if the Holy Ghost sat on you, you're going to know you've been sat on. Right? You know, if somebody big sits on you, you're going to know because you're going to feel the weight of it. And I'm talking about, and with the Holy Ghost, there's a weightiness that, that comes on you when he, when, he, when he decides to sit on you. That's why sometimes when you're getting prayed for, he'll sit on you and you can't stand. And you see people go over. Just, you know, don't fight it. <laughs> when, if, he, if he decides to sit, you're going to go over anyway, so... Praise the Lord. And they, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And that's what happened on Thursday, too. There was just a, um, there was such a nice flow and, and didn't have to beg, didn't have to drag people to the front. I just gave an invitation and everybody came. It was wonderful. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And, and I was going through this and it's like, um, you're being, they, they were positioned. And they're praying from a place where part of a military force is posted for strategic purposes. And so when they gave this prayer, when they prayed this prayer, it was strategic. It wasn't one of those, oh God, oh God. No, no, no. They're saying, they were saying something. And in verse 29, King James, it says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto your servants, your servants that with all boldness um, they may speak your word. By stretching forth your hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. See, they were putting the orders in, and they were saying, okay, God, this is, this is what we're expecting from you, right? And it says, when they had prayed, the place, when? Yeah, there's a, there's a when. And we prayed. The place was shaken, where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke the word of God with boldness. The multitude of them that which believed were of one heart, one soul, neither said any of them that, that 
aught of the things which they possessed was their own, but had all things in common. In other words, what do you need? I can help you. Right? Wow. And I like this, 33. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace. Not just plain grace, but great grace was upon them all. Neither was any among them that lacked. Why? Because they were in a position. It's like if you join the army, you don't have to buy your own um, weapons. You don't have to buy your own food. You don't have to bring your knapsack and the lunch bag. No, everything is supplied, right? When you're in the army, nothing lacks. Well, they were, they were, <laughs> come on, they were positioned for a reason and nothing lacked. To, and they were positioned in a particular way which someone or someplace or someone is arranged. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, I like this. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. He first loved us. In other words, he loved us first. And he didn't stop. He's going to keep going and keep going, keep going. Let's jump to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I like that. Nevertheless, it just canceled little everything that he said before. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What day? Any day. Anytime something comes up and messes with you, come on now. You gotta be you gotta be fully persuaded. You got you know whom you believed in. Come on, he has walked us through battles and battles and battles, and we come out on the other side. He's walked through us through the fire, and we come out the other side not even smelling like smoke. Come on, it's good. He is able to keep that which I've committed to him. And that's the thing, because sometimes we want to we want to pay tennis with it. Well, God, you take it. Okay, I'm going to take it back. And no, no, I'm going to serve it over to you. No, I'm going to take it. Serve. And, and it's like, no, just let him take it. New Living Translation, the last part, it says, For I know the one in whom I trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard what I've entrusted to him until the day of his return. That's pretty cool. Listen to the message. I could not be sure of my ground. <laughs> I like that. The one I've trusted and can take care of what he's trusted me to do right to the end. See, there's something that he's trusted you to do. All of us. We've been entrusted with something and everybody has a part to play and there is no small parts not at all it's like if you ever worked in a uh, in a, uh i grew up in food service and i've worked in restaurants most of my life in hotels and like hilton and all that stuff and there is no small parts actually the most important person in a kitchen is a dishwasher you get a dirty plate or you get dirty silverware, I'll tell you what. Yeah, you worked in housekeeping, and if the if you you know you pull you open up the the, the sheets and you find dirt, you're not going back. No matter how good look you know how friendly the people at the front desk are, no 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 no, mm -mm. no. So you think about this in the in the body in the church body there is no small parts either. Everybody has a part to play. And once you do, and when you, you find your happiness when you fulfilled your part. And most people that are disgruntled are because they're not doing nothing. But God has called you to do something. But, and, it, and it's, you know, he's been scratching on the inside of you saying, okay, you know what? You need to be doing, you know, I want you to do this for me. Would you do me a favor? Would you do this? Would you do that? And sometimes it's not in the church. Sometimes it's outside the church. A lot of times it's outside the church. You know, um, uh, <laughs> I go to the gym, and in my spin class, I'm, I'm called the, um, the mayor of the class because everybody knows who I am. As a matter of fact, when I went on vacation, nobody sat in my bike because the people in the class would not allow anybody to sit in my bike. 
<laughs> because it was mine. Right. And I, you know, I was talking to people yesterday, some new people welcoming, welcoming them in. And, and they said, wow, you know, everybody here. Yes, I do. Right. So then when my friend Glenn passed away, uh, we had a special spin class for him. And at the end, they allowed me to say some words. And they said, wow. So I preached to him for a good five minutes and we raised our water glasses and I had a toast for Glenn at the end, but it was like, and then all these people, the, the, uh, two days later, they all showed up at the funeral. And they said, wow, man, I didn't know. Because <laughs> at the end, I gave a, a, an invitation. I said, would you like to meet my Jesus? The one that I know? And they were saying, yeah, I want to meet that one. <laughs> Why? Because he had fun. Right? But it was, and it's cool. Um, so even, you know, today they still, you know, they, they talk about, wow, that, that, Funeral service, man, that was awesome. <laughs> what did I do? Just be myself. That's all you got to do. Just be yourself. You don't have to be any because you can't be anybody else. You try to be somebody else, and it's just gonna hurt. <laughs> it will hurt you. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but praise the Lord. You do have something to do, and and God has given you something to do, and He's not gonna real, He's not gonna let you go until you do it. So you must well just do it, do it. Second uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen, please, King James. Hallelujah. Now thanks be to God. See, giving thanks, it will. The more you do that, it will position you into a, a place of revival. Why? Because you, you're getting your mind off of you and you're thanking him. The more you thank him, the more he wants to return your thanks. Uh huh. Now, thanks be to God, which always causes me, us to triumph, always, in Christ, and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. The message says it this way. I like it. And I got it. Thank God. In the Messiah, in Christ, God leads us from place to place in one perpetual Perpetual Victory Parade. Can you imagine? Just a, it's a glory parade that just keeps on going and going and going and going. And as you show off your goods and your wares, and, and it's like in a parade. You always, you know, people in the, you, you, you watch a parade, and the, whoever's in the parade, they, they, they show off their best. They bring forth their best. If you're marching, um, Tim, you know this, if you're marching in the parade, you're, you're, Boots are shined up. All the brass is shined up. Anything that's metal has a shine on it, and you're you're shining, right? Because you're you're showing people, hey, listen, this is the best. Because you're representing somebody, right? And we're representing Jesus, and so we ought to look the part. You know, I remember back when I first came, started coming here. No, when I first started coming to Nova Scotia. Wow, I've been here a long time, uh, 34 years ago. And um, there was this guy that had a, a, a car that said Ambassador for Christ on it, but it was all ratted and it, and it was rusted. And, and it was just like, okay, um, if you're going to be an ambassador, you should be in something shiny, nice, new, like that looks the part, right? An ambassador for a, for a country if they're in a different country and they're an ambassador for that country, um, they look the part. They don't walk around in burlap, right? And God doesn't want us looking around, looking, you know, ratty, right? So, hey, anyways, perpetual victory parade. Through us, he brings knowledge of Christ. Everywhere we go, people breathe in the ex exquisite fragrance. In other words, the Lord is going to put you in places and situations so that you can be victorious everywhere you go. Especially when it's, you know, a situation is tough. It's like, oof, all right, what are we going to do? It's not, what am I going to do? Lord, what are we going to do about this situation? <laughs> and he fixes it. And you come through not even smelling like smoke. It's a, it's a cool thing. Um, Psalms 100, verse 4. We'll get into Thanksgiving. Mm. Psalms 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Now, if you... If you're not thankful... How are you going to get in? Because it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. If you don't have thanksgiving in your mouth, 
are you going to get in? How can you enter in that way without? Because entering in that, well, Thanksgiving is kind of like a key, isn't it? When you start praying to God, what do you do? You thank him for his goodness. You thank him for how good he is. Thank you for what he's done. Thank you, just God, thank you. Right? So, um, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts of praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. That's what we did on Thursday. Blessed, just blessed his name. The more you did it, the more you wanted to do it, and it just, it just flowed that way. Amplified, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and a thank offering, and into his courts of praise. Be thankful and say so to him. Say it. Out loud, you got to, out of your mouth, you say it, and bless and affectionately praise his name. <laughs> praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 50, verse 23, in the new NIV. I know we don't, we don't use that version very much, but this, in this instance, it's really good. Psalms 50, verse 23, in the NIV. It says, he who sacrifices thank offerings honors me. And he prepares a way so that I may show him the salvation of the Lord. Isn't that good? He who sacrifices thank offerings honors me. When you do that, you're honoring God, and he prepares the way so that, that I may show him the salvation of God. So your thanks to him is going to prepare the way for him to say, okay, you know what? There, you go down this path right here, and I'll tell you what, at the end of this path, there is a blessing waiting for you. But you got to go down this path. It's not over here. It's over here. But God, it's not. It's bumpy over there. It's rough over there. Why don't I go over here where it's nice and smooth and easy? Because it's not there. It's there. <laughs> In the <laughs> Psalms 50, verse 23, a New Living Translation, it says, Giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. See, there's a path that he wants you to follow. And again, it, sometimes it's not easy. But I'll tell you what, he's in it. He's in it. Contemporary English version, it says, The sacrifice that honors me is a thankful heart. If you wanted to know what, how to sac, you know how to how to be thankful, yeah, just thank him. Obey me, and I, your God, will show my power to save. And He's got a lot of it. Talking about praise, because we we talked about Thanksgiving, but praise Psalms eight verse one, King James, please. Psalms eight verse one. I feel like I got a teaching thing on going on here or something. Yeah, I'm not yelling. Imagine. <laughs> Psalms 8, verse 1. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who has set your glory above the heavens? Verse 2. Out of the, you have, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you might still the enemy and the avenger. You might still the enemy and the avenger. Praise will still the enemy and the avenger. Look at this in the Amplified, the last part. It says that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. <laughs> Passion, I like this. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Amen. Your praise right. will shut Satan's mouth. Amen. See, because a lot of times we, we get into a situation, what do we do? Say nothing, right? We, we, we get um, discouraged and say, I don't want to praise. I don't want to shout. I don't want to do nothing. I want to stay home, sit in the dark, and, you know, and just develop negatives. Right? Really, that's what we do. We've all done it. My goodness. And realize that, hey, the more you praise, they'll shut his mouth. Because he's the one that's whispering to you. You know, he's telling you, well, you know, you're not really appreciated here. Nobody really. If you weren't here, nobody would know. What a lie. Right? So you got to praise him to shut that thing off. Don't listen to that. In Matthew 21, verse 16, it's, it's the same thing that Jesus was talking about. And he said unto him, hear, hear what I say. Jesus said unto them, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? You have perfected praise. So one says um, in, in verse, uh, Psalms 8, um, he called it strength, but Jesus called it praise. 
C, praise equals strength. Strength equals praise. If you have no praise, you have no strength. If the joy of the Lord is your strength, you have no joy, you have no strength. So it seems like all of these things are all intertwined. Joy, praise, strength. Boom. Verse Psalms 9, verse 1, King James. It says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. You ever tell those kids, you know, that are, uh, that are standing up and say, like, sit down. Would you sit down? And, and, you know, they're still standing. Why? Because their heart's not in it. Wholeheartedness. It says, I will praise you with my whole heart. I will show forth all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. And when, not if, when my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. The key word is when. Why? Because you're giving him praise. You are given, and so your praise is going to strengthen that situation and it's going to shut the devil up, slap him a couple of times. All the time. Yeah, come on now, over and over. Repeated. So if you want to do something perpetual, slap him. Perpetually. Over and over and over. Hebrews 13, verse 15. It says, But by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Giving thanks to his name. That's what we do. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13, please. King James. Second Chronicles 5, 13. And it says, it, And it, it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and the singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard, in praising and thanking the Lord, when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good... His mercy endures forever. Then the house was filled with a cloud, even the, cl the house of the Lord, this house, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house. Mm -mm -mm. Come on now. That's all we got to do is just start praising him and watch what happens. He's waiting for this. He gave us a little taste of it on Thursday. And it's a, it's a nice, it's a taste of what makes you want to say, okay, I could use a little more of that. I could use some more of that. Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, verse 21. Now just go to 22 for your lack of time. It says, when they, when they began to praise, to be, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children. But the thing was, they didn't, they just began. Just get started. That's all it is. Just get started. Um, Romans chapter 4, verse 20, in the Amplified Version, Romans 4, 20, talking about Abraham, it says, No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubting question, doubtingly questioned concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise. So as you give praise, your faith is going to be strengthened. Amen. You're going to be empowered the more that you praise him. There's an empowerment on there. There is a, there's a, your faith will be jacked to the ceiling. Why? Because <laughs> my God can do no wrong. Come on now. If he's, with, if he's for you, who can be, who? Who's going to be against you? Nobody. Come on now. So he was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Man, oh man. God is just, he's just so good. He's so good. Can you handle a couple more verses? Okay, Luke 17, verse 11. And it's in the Amplified. Luke 17, 11. And uh, talking about the 10 lepers. Love this story. We all know it. Yeah, 17, 11, Amplified. And Jesus went on his way to Jerusalem, and it occurred to him uh, that Jesus was passing along the border uh, between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into one village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance, and they raised up their voices and called, Jesus, Master, take pity and have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go at once and show yourself to the priest. As they went, they were cured and clean. 
Then one of them, upon seeing that he was cured, turned back, recognizing, thanking, and praising God with a loud voice. That's the part I like. He was thanking God. He was praising God with a loud voice when he noticed. He fell prostrate at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. He was a Samaritan, and Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the nine? No one was found to uh, return to recognize and give thanks and praise, thanks and praise to God except this alien. He calls him an alien, <laughs> Samaritan. And he said uh, to him, get up, go your way. Your faith, your trust and confidence that spring from your belief in God has restored you to health. That means that, that guy was a leper. He had digits missing. And because he gave thanks and praise, the digits came back. His nose grew back. His fingers grew back. Whatever was gone was re returned. Whatever was missing. Sometimes maybe it's in our praise where it's missing. That's going to bring all of the things that have, that the canker worm has stolen is going to bring us back. I don't know. It could be a key. I don't know. Remember Phil Driscoll when he was here? He said this, the law of sound. Sound is a vibration. It's a reaction to a force. It penetrates the atmosphere. It is a spearhead. It's a tie connector and a bridge between the spirit and the natural realms. Realms. Your sound connects you to your future. And he, and he tied that together with Proverbs 8.20. Uh, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. What are you saying? With the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You notice they said death first? They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, and then he said, if you just shout when things are good, you are no danger to darkness. You are just living in the aftermath of what is going on in the world. Faith doesn't live in the aftermath. Faith is in the forefront. Silence, listen to this, silence is the sound of defeat. Shout is the sound of victory. Praise is not something to, that you do. Praise is something you live. Praise is not something you do. Praise is something you live. So if you give thanks to God in the area that you're believing him to help you with, what's going to happen? We may be just one praise away from all the breakthroughs in our lives. Right? And, and so it, it's kind of easily said than done because you, we, we have to get our minds around that fact and say, okay, you know what? Maybe I am one praise away. But I don't want to do it. I'm tired. I don't feel like praising right now. Well, if you, if you do it when you, especially when you don't feel like it, isn't that the sacrifice of praise? Isn't that where he'll just come in and all of a sudden he'll take that sacrifice and just whoosh, open the windows of heaven? We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.